Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it may be Christmas week, but we've still got a bunch of new stuff that's hit our shelves in the past week. So I pulled some of the best stuff and I've got them right here in front of me to show you. Let's check them out. So the first thing this week is a new slip joint. It's a new exclusive, it's a new real steel. This is the G-Slip Knife Center exclusive with natural micarta handles. Now essentially what you can think of this knife as is a slightly smaller and slip joint mechanism version of the metamorph folder from Real Steel. This is an Ostop Hell design and because we've they've taken that pattern and created this slippy out of it we've got a very very clean shape going on here. We've got just a little bit to break things up. We've got a little bit of a sharpening choil here and a little bit of a notch right here at the spine to kind of echo that and give the blade right there at the base a little bit of a sex appeal, a little bit of a curve, even though we're dealing with mostly a straight line. VG10 steel, drop point shape as you can see, about three and a half inches. So it's a fairly good amount of blade for a slip joint pocket knife. We've got some nice touches. We've got a crowned spine and a crowned backspacer running all the way back. And on the back, we've even got a wire deep carry pocket clip, which is pretty cool. You can go on either side, left or the right, which is a great way to carry this slip joint without it you know, floating around in the bottom of your pocket. I know that's one of the reasons I tend to not carry a slip joint in my main pocket anyway. This kind of fixes that and it, it lets you have that traditional style mechanism, but easier to carry with a modern style pocket clip, which is pretty cool. It's also got a hidden lanyard attachment point there at the back. Walk and talk on these, they're not super stiff. They're a bit on the lighter side but not too bad at all. Right now we've got an introductory price on these of only $39.95. That is gonna go back up at some point. So if you wanna lock in that low price, go ahead and order them now. Um, I think I'm gonna, it's pretty nice, especially in these exclusive Micarta handles here at the Knife Center. Now I say especially in these handles because we do have some other variants as well. This is one of the standard versions that has a black blade and a yellow G10. We've also got a plain satin blade with a black G10 handle if you want something a little more unobtrusive. I really like this yellow color though. I'm, I'm always excited to see colors on some knives. We see a lot of black and gray knives here every day, so it's nice to have that here. Now price on this particular one, it is on sale right now for $47.68, so it's a little bit more expensive than the Micarta version, and it is going to go back up again once our sale on real steel items um, ends as well. So again, if you like these designs, now's the time to strike. Either one's great. Prices will be going back up soon, so there you go. Next up, we've got another new knife. This is the Unmei or Unmei from RMJ Tactical. We have a few different colors of two-tone G10, but this black and orange tiger stripe is a Knife Center exclusive. Price on this is $245 on all the variants, in fact, they're $245, but you get American-made quality, nice warranty, and they're, it's Ryan Johnson's take on the Quaken style of blade that's been very popular lately. And I really like what he's done here by giving it a bit of a broader blade than most typical Quakens you see these days, but it maintains that nice trailing point blade shape and that narrow kind of squared off handle as well. It's squared off, but it does feel pretty comfortable, at least for the smaller grips you'd be, you'd be employing this knife in. Make a great little kitchen knife if you want, but I think a great little hunting knife. In addition to, it's an RMJ tactical, so it does have kind of those tactical applications in mind. We've got Nitro V steel on this blade, so it is nice and stainless, but we still have a tungsten Cerakote finish in addition to that. Now they've left the edge a little bit on the thicker side on this knife, as so they're sacrificing a little bit in that laser sharp precision and they're going more for a little bit of durability. If you're going to be using this in sort of a tactical or fighting situation, law enforcement out there, they want something that can hold up. So the edge is a little bit thicker, but it's got almost a mirror polish and it is still very, very sharp. Just feeling it, I can tell it's going to cut. And Nitro V is not too difficult to maintain as well when it, when it does come time to sharpen. But that's the RMJ Unmei Knife Center exclusive with the Tiger Strike G10. As far as the sheath, it is Kydex. Fits in nicely and we're still able to get a full handed grip on the handle as you draw. So you're not gonna have to adjust your, your hold on the knife after you draw it. It's gonna be ready to go right away. It also comes with two straps setting this sheath up for horizontal carry. Although you've got plenty of rivets here if you wanna configure something else, some, type, uh, some different style of carry. But it is set up for horizontal whether you're doing that cross draw or behind the small of your back like scout style. And the snaps on here are actually pull the dot snaps. So it's gonna be a little bit harder for this to come loose 
in use or actually get bumped loose, I should say, in day-to-day -day life because these snaps only disengage in one direction. If you try to pop it open the other way, not gonna go. So that's a nice little added feature there. It's some good attention to detail that we appreciate seeing. Right, we're seeing more of the new 2020 things from Wii Knife Company and Civivi roll in. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a new Civivi. This is the 913 Hooligan. For an EDC knife on the budget, this is gonna be a really nice option. We've got a sub three inch blade, D2 steel, satin finish, hollow grind. So it's gonna be nice and thin behind the edge. It's gonna cut very well. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible, left or right side carry. It's a liner locking folder, but this is not a flipper. It may look like there, there might've been a flipper tab hidden under there, but this is a thumb stud only knife that rides on bronze washers. Doesn't flick open as easily as some of the stuff they do that's equipped with bearings, but it's still nice and smooth, especially if you're not trying to really rocket it out. But the handle material is where these uh, really set themselves apart. We've got micarta scales over skeletonized liners. So even though it is a, a full liner on both sides, because they're skeletonized out really, really nicely, it's a pretty lightweight knife. These only weigh about 3.2 ounces. So it's not something like a Benchmade bug out where it's gonna be under two ounces, but it's still very, very easy to carry. And you get these really cool Micarta colors. This one here is their, they're calling it snakeskin Micarta. And I think it's the, it's the most out there version or it's the most out there color they're offering right now anyway, but it's a really cool looking color too. I don't think it's too far out there. Almost reminds me of burlap Micarta in a way with the type of vibe you get, but it is not burlap Micarta. This is canvas Micarta. Prices on these knives, $54, Civivi Hooligan. All right, next we've got a new folder from Wii Knife Company. And if you remember that Riazio fixed blade we showed last week, you remember I looked at it and said it kind of made me think of a bit of a folder? Well, there's a folder version of it, and this is called the Scopio. We've got CPM 20 CV blade steel, and we've got those same cool compound grinds that the fixed blade version had. Both of them are hollow. We just have a higher hollow grind here along the belly. So it's gonna work better at those slicing things. Again, I said about that fixed blade, it doesn't really remind me style-wise of a hunting knife, but the shape overall and the usability would make a great hunting pattern. Again, I don't think anyone's probably gonna be taking this out as a hunter, but you've got that nice long belly and that nice thin edge, thanks to that hollow grind behind it, that those types of slices, anything you're, where you're using that tip, using that belly, it's gonna slice very, very nicely. And you got that cool little swedge there at the back, which a lot of times a swedge can be placed along here to kind of help remove that sharp edge as you're moving through materials. This one here though, it's pretty much for show, but it looks pretty cool. Removes a little, bo little bit of weight too, I suppose. You can make that argument. Going back to the handles, we have bronze anodized and stonewashed titanium. Although across this range of Scopio models, there are a few different colorways available few different handle options and a few different blade finishes as well. In addition to this black stone wash, you can get it in a plain, uh, a plain stone wash finish as well. As far as the handle construction itself, there's no backspacer. You can see that we've just got a small join right there at the back. So these are two halves of titanium that are each milled separately and then mated together. You can, you can kind of think of it as like a split integral design. Now that's, you know, that's not entirely accurate uh, in terms of classification, but it gets the idea across anyway. The other thing that's nice about that is we've got a nice hidden lanyard attachment point there at the back, something we're seeing more and more of. We definitely saw it on that real steel earlier. I always like that. It's a nice way to keep the outside of the knife clean looking, but still offer the point for a lanyard for those that want it. Now, as far as pricing goes on these, we're at $259.25. You get that premium construction, those premium materials, and really nice flipping action because it's a Wii, the Wii Scopio. All right, next we've got a fixed blade from Wii, and this is called the BUD, or the B-U-D. There are periods after the name, or after the initials, it stands for Back Up Dagger. So what's interesting about this knife is it's actually not steel. This is actually made out of titanium, and it's razor freaking sharp. Very, very sharp indeed, double-edged as well. We've got two colorways available. We've got this bronze stone washed, as well as a blue stone washed. And with that titanium construction, it's gonna be super, super lightweight. Obviously, it's not gonna hold an edge super well like steel can because of that material, but that's the trade-off you get for that lightweight carry. And you get a Kydex sheath with this too with a nice ball chain on the end to keep it very concealable as well. Prices on these, $99.99. All right, that's some of the new models. Now we've got a few different new variants available. We've actually got some Damasteel versions of the Synergy 2 from Wii Knife Company. 
Now they've upgraded both versions of this knife. You've got both the regular trailing point and the Tonto blade available with this upgrade in Damasteel. And you get those that same great integral 3D milled titanium handle. One of the more comfortable knife handles, folding knife handles anyway, that is out there because of all these nice swells and stuff going on there. Feels really good. This particular one, we've got a shred carbon fiber inlay and diagonal milled lines. Now with all that premium materials and the expensive manufacturing techniques that it takes to get this integral piece of milled titanium together, it is a little bit pricey. We're at 625.60 on these knives, but if you know what you're getting, you know what you're getting for sure. Flipping it over on the back, we've got a few more nice little details. Nice little Moku, Moku tie pivot collar there, which is quite nice. And the milled pocket clip. This is a milled titanium pocket clip, but the retention point is almost like sunken in. It's almost like they pushed it down. Looks pretty cool and you don't really see that too often. So I like that very much. We Synergy 2 with Damasteel blades. All right, next up is actually one of the things I'm most excited about this week. It's a new version of the SOG Terminus XR with an upgraded S35 VN blade for just $79.95. This is only an $80 knife with their XR lock, that crossbar style lock that the Axis popularized. Premium steel like that in a great everyday carry size. This is a really great design. And in fact, the $50 version of this knife with D2 blade steel just took the budget knife category in our best knives of 2019. We like it a lot over here for sure. This is only about a $30 upgrade and for that, you get that S35 VN steel, and you also get a G10 and carbon fiber hybrid handle scale. So the base of it is G10, but you have a layer of carbon fiber at the top that is then milled away. You got a few diagonal lines on there for a little bit of traction. It's really nice, really good steel, and it flicks nicely. You've got that kind of axis style, but you can't call it an axis. You've got that kind of style of flipping. And the other thing they've done, they actually make it flip very well. That's something some of this style of lock bar has kind of prohibited in the past. The flippers haven't always been super crisp. They've been a little looser. They've done a really good job here. They've got a really nice detent tuned in. This is another knife with that sub three inch blade, which is important to some people out there that may live in certain restrictive localities. I like it. And you got that black deep carry pocket clip to keep it out of the way. And it's a little more subtle than the gray versions that they've got on some of the other versions. But that's the new SOG Terminus XR with S35 VN. Next up, we've got another variant. We've got a blacked out Para 3 Lightweight from Spyderco. Almost all blacked out, I should say. The blade, of course, as you can see right away, is black. This is the first non-satin Para 3 out there. And we've got a black DLC coating on this for a nice extra bit of hardness on that BD1 end steel. The handles are still black. They're still that bi-directional FRN and we've got a black deep carry wire pocket clip. Now I said almost blacked out because the only thing that isn't is the compression lock itself. That still is kind of that bare satin metal. So you are gonna get some reflections there if that's what you're concerned about. I understand there are some users out there where that is important, but everything else, however, is nice and blacked out. You might get some flaking on the clip over time. This is a, a painted pocket clip, so you might get that, but it's the pair of three lightweight. It's a great little knife. With these, little, with these few upgrades on it, we're up to 104 on it, but you've got that great full flat grind for great slicing. You've got that great one hand opening hole, that finger choil that lets you get a four finger grip, a little bit more actually, probably even bigger hands than mine will be have no problem achieving a grip like this on this knife. It's another great design. This was actually the intermediate knife winner in our best knives of the year that just aired earlier this week. So it's a great design, Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight, all black. All right, now we've got a special edition Kershaw, a new version of the Leak. This may look a little similar to one we had earlier. This is carbon fiber and this is a CPM 154 stonewashed blade, but no ordinary carbon fiber. This is the glow in the dark carbon fiber. You've seen it on a few ZTs recently. Bring that all together. You got a nice United States made assisted flipper. We're at 129.95 on this. Got that great modified Warncliffe blade that the Leak is known for, liner lock, got really nice handles. It's a really nice, elegant look. Make a great gentleman's knife. And you got that speed safe assisted flipping action. Very nice indeed. With that glow in the dark carbon fiber, it's even better. There you go. 
So that's not the only new Kershaw this week. We've actually got a trio of new, very affordable Kershaw models here in the clam pack. Sorry, I don't have any that are opened up so you can see them a little bit better. But all three of these are assisted opening flippers. They've got that speed safe action and they're all under 20 bucks. I think 18, 19 and 20, depending on which one of these you get. You've got their Passage model, which is actually very similar to the Oblivion they released earlier this year. Although they've simplified the construction. You don't have the G10 inlays. You don't have some of the nice uh, fancier milling on the side. You have a similar blade shape, clip point instead of a drop point, however. But you get that HCR 13 MOV steel and a frame lock for, where are we at here? $18 on this knife. Pretty good deal, I think so. Three and a half inches of blade there. The next step up is the Asteroid. We've got that drop point blade shape, HCR 13 MOV again. About 3.3 inches of steel, synthetic handles, glass filled nylon for $19. And finally, we've got the Wilden. Again, HCR 13 MOV steel, 2.9 inches of blade, speed safe, liner lock reversible pocket clip. There you go, 20 bucks on this guy. All right, next up we've got a new Benchmade. It's a new version of their Ale friction folder. This is the Ale Fume version, which has been upgraded with this really cool Rich Light handle material. Now Rich Light actually is a paper product. It's very similar in fact, in feel and in performance to Paper Micarta. And they've got this really cool layered look, this really cool uh, geometric, or not geometric, topographic look with the colors that they've chosen here. As you can see also, this is a cigar cutter. We've got a chisel ground S30V blade. You can see this one right here is a first production. That way you can stick the end of your stogie right in there, fold it shut, snip the end, and you're ready to go. But it's also a multi-tool. You know how I know that? It's got a bottle opener right there. Really cool, nice little bit of added feature. And you got a little uh, bit of a pry bar screwdriver tip on the other end as well. We've also got a micro bit driver, micro hex bit driver here on the end. It's not gonna fit a standard size hex bit. But you do, if you have some of the smaller ones, some of the, the tiny little finger screwdriver sizes, kinds that are good for uh, messing around with, uh, with knife hardware, those will, will fit in there, no problem. And this is, in addition to being a knife and a cigar cutter, it's a money clip. It's got a fair bit of space underneath that clip. You can see we've got some nice gold colored posts right there and a nice ball bearing there at the end. So it's a really classy presentation and it's the same price as the original, 136. All right, next up, we've got some customized versions of the Chavez Ultramar Redencion Street. And these were actually customized by Chavez himself for us here at the Knife Center. We've got that PVD stonewash blade, S35VN, but the really cool feature are these anodized inlays. A couple different colors, we've got bronze, purple, and blue. And what I really like is we've got almost a fiber looking thing going on here. We've got some cross hatched lines from the finish. It's, it wasn't sanded completely smooth or I shouldn't say it like that. It is pretty smooth, but it wasn't sanded to a completely uniform scratch pattern. They've left this, this look on there, and I think it looks really cool. Almost, like I said, almost like fiber. Really fine, really refined. But you do have that skull pocket clip on the back, so maybe not too refined. Um, but that has a finish that matches the inlay on the front side. And something I've always loved about these Ultramars is you've got a really fine cut for the lock bar itself. There's not a big wide gap there. Shows off the precision. The pivot's nice and close to the end of the knife so you don't have a ton of wasted space. These are made by Riot in China. That's how we get the, they are able to get the prices to where they are. Even with all this customized stuff going on, 320 on this blade. Next up, we've got a new fillet knife. This is the Step Up Fillet Knife from White River Knives made right here in the USA. The blade is S35VN with a stonewashed finish and just over eight inches. Got this offset handle with kind of a downward cant with this nice green and black G10. You get to see a nice, uh, a good selection of the layering there. And I find it pretty comfortable to hold. We've got thumb scallops here and kind of in a standard grip, the point is definitely kind of trailing. It's definitely upswept. So this is not gonna only work well, I think, as a fillet knife, but you could probably do a little bit of butchering with this as well because you've got that nice sweep to the belly going on right there. As far as flex goes, I would probably rate this as sort of a moderate flex. It's not a super flexy knife, but you can see here the type of flex that would be typical of this blade. Plus you got S35VN, so you get that edge retention. And because of this offset and the angle of the handle, I actually found myself uh, just kind of setting this down on a cutting board to see how it would feel. And it's not too bad. If you were in a camp situation and you just, you wanted to bring this knife to take care of all your, your hunting, fishing, food prep duties, it wouldn't be bad. You could do some kind of rocking cuts there on the cutting board. You've got some belly here. You could do some of that. 
kind of like an eight inch chef's knife with a uh, with an up or a up canted handle. Not too bad. So this really could cover a lot of ground in your camp. And for this American made blade, only $149.99. As you can see, we've got this Kydex sheath as well. And it's got a bunch of cutouts. So you got a lot of drainage points if moisture were to get in there. And it's even got a line cutter cutout here where the edge is exposed just a little bit. So you could kind of bring it up, snip your fishing wire or anything like that without actually having to draw the blade, which is pretty nice. You can probably even do that while it's still on your belt if you get good at it. Because we do have a modular belt attachment that you can hook into these eyelets in a few different ways. So you have a few different carry options right there. So that's it for the new items this week. This is actually the last new items video going up in 2019. But there's even more stuff I didn't get to show you. And we've got even more stuff coming in every daggone day. So we're going to have more in 2020 for you guys. Be sure to let us know what you thought of these new blades down there in the comments. If you want to get your hands on any of them, you can click the links in the description to head over to KnifeCenter.com. I'm David C. Anderson signing off. See you next time. The BUD, which stands for backup, backup dagger. Tietzel. And you get this really cool layered topographic, topographic, topographic effect. Topographic, 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 topographic.